even as we've temporarily moved online, we can still continue to worship God. Here's how we can have a great virtual worship service at home. Together, we will continue to lift our voices to God. So don't just listen and watch, come and sing with us. Listen, take down notes, and avoid distractions. Receive in faith the word of God spoken to us through the preaching. Let's trust and honor God even in these challenging times, for it is Him who gives us the ability to produce wealth and enables us to excel in the grace of giving. Send us your prayer request and stay connected with the church community. Connect with your victory groups and encourage one another. Together, let's honor God and make disciples online. Hello everyone, welcome to Victory Malate, where our heart is to honor God and to make disciples. Truly, even with what's happening around us, we can still take the time to pray, to worship, and to hear God's word together. And we would also like to ask you to prepare a drink and a piece of bread as we take communion and remember what the Lord has done for us. And now let us join the music team as we praise and worship God together. Wherever you are, I hope you find a comfortable place to worship God with us. In Psalms 100 verse 4, it says, Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. God, I pray that as we praise You today, let Your presence comfort our weary heart.
promises no one goes Say the word and I will follow I will go where you would go Take the lead and I will follow you To places no one goes Say the word and I will follow I will go where you With you by my side With you by my side Lord, thank you for being with us in every battles for not leaving nor forsaking us
Lord, thank you for what you've done for us on the cross. Thank you, God, because you gave your life for us, that we may have a life, Lord God, that is lived to the full. God, I pray that you would continue, Lord God, to live this life honoring you and worshiping you. God, I pray, Lord God, that we would be able, Lord God, to give you our all just as you have done for us. And God, I pray that your sacrifice on the cross, Lord God, would lead us to live a life that honors you above everything. God, I know that even in the midst of what's happening around us, God, your love for us never changes. Your promises for us never changes. And God, I pray that we would cling on tighter to you, to trust and depend on you all the more, because we know, Lord God, that you will come true for us. God, I pray, Lord God, that we would always look to the cross. We would always trust in your unfailing love for each and every one of us. God, today, I pray, Lord God, that your peace and your love will just continue, Lord God, to embrace us and remind us that you are here with us. God, again, we just want to thank you and praise you for everything that you've done for us. I pray that each and every day, we would always seek to glorify and honor your name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and Amen. Now we hope that you are encouraged by the worship. And now for our time of giving, here is Dave, one of our culture, uh, cross-cultural missionaries to lead us in our time of giving. Thank you, Chrisea. Hello, everyone. Let me exhort you in this time of giving. In Luke chapter 11, verse 41 and 42, Jesus said, But now as for what is inside you, be generous to the poor and everything will be clean for you. Woe to you, Pharisees, because you give God a tenth of your mint, rue, and all kinds of garden herbs, but you neglect justice and the love of God. You should have practiced the latter without leaving the former undone. So you see here, Jesus criticized the Pharisees because even though they are returning their tithes, they were stingy towards the poor. And this is actually a good reminder for all of us today that we continue practice tithing while at the same time continue loving God, being fair and kind to others. Even if we are not able to meet face to face this time, we would like you to know that we continue to stand with you in prayer. So please feel free to send us your prayer request, even your answered prayers by clicking on the link provided on this video or by scanning the QR code posted on your screen. You see, giving is an act of worship, whether we do it physically or online. You may return your tithes and give your offerings by going to www.victory.org.ph give or by scanning the QR code posted on your screen. And by the way, if you want to help our frontliners and you want to bless them, you may do so by visiting the link or scanning the QR code on your screen for more details. Together, let's continue to express our worship unto God by putting Him first in our lives and allowing Him to work in and through us. Let us pray. Lord, we would like to thank you for today for reminding us that you're not just calling us, Lord, to return our tithes and give our offerings, but you're calling us to continue to love you and be kind to others. I pray that you would help us express that, Lord, um, in whatever way possible so that your name would be honored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It beats the same 
You lit for sap and free us from our burdens. You love it bites of every broken heart. Now hope will rise in all that you created. Cause you are here, God of all. Lord, have your way. Come take your place. Let all the earth be saved. Your kingdom. everyone, thank you for joining today's worship service. We are finishing up our series entitled Perspective. 
getting a fresh look from Psalm 23. Please turn your Bibles there and let us read out loud Psalm 23, a Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Lord, we praise you as the Lord over all and the Lord over our lives. We acknowledge your presence in our midst, and we ask you, God, that you fill us with your Holy Spirit, that we may know you and experience you more deeply. Lord, bless our time, bless the reading and the preaching of the word. As I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been looking at Psalm 23, and we've been getting a fresh look on who God is, our Lord, our Shepherd, and in Him we shall not want. Psalm 23 is not just David's most popular psalm, but if you notice, it is also one of his most personal psalm. He was not just talking about God, but he is talking to God. He was not just talking about what God has done, but who God is to him. In mga nakarangong parts, we talked about provision, peace, and protection. So ngayong linggo, this week, we will understand and appreciate God's personal presence. So hopefully what was true in a personal declaration of David will also become true and personal in our lives as well. During these troubling and difficult times, God's presence is often questioned and sometimes perceived as absent. Nasaan nga ba si Lord during this time? Or natutulog ba ang Diyos? A fresh perspective on God's presence can help us have faith in the midst of challenging times. As the late Christian theologian and apologist Ravi Sakaraya said, Having the answer is not essential to living. What is essential is the sense of God's presence during dark seasons of questioning. So we would like for each and every one of us to be more conscious of God's presence during this dark and difficult season. But more than that, we need to realize that God's greatest gift to His people is Himself, His presence. This is the reason why the psalmist David can declare, I shall not want, or I lack nothing, or I have everything that I need. Kasi nga, alam niya na, na if God is there, He is everything that we would ever need. Max Lucado, a popular author, also said this, that God's presence is His presence. His greatest gift is himself. So what can we learn about God's personal presence from Psalm 23? First, I want to mention that God's presence goes before us to lead us and to prepare the way for us. Actually, before talking about God's presence this week, we were already alluding to God's presence in the previous weeks. Remember those phrases? He makes me lie down in green pasture, leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads us in paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Well, if you will really look at that, you know that He leads us because He knows the way. He leads us because He knows where to go. And He leads us where He is certain that it is the best for us. Wherever the shepherd leads us, He will graciously provide for all of the flock's needs. And there He can and will definitely protect the flock. And for God to do that in us, how is this and why is this so? It is because He has gone before us. He has gone ahead of us. Where we are going or where He is leading, He has been there. He was there. And verse 5 makes it even clearer. Verse 5 says this, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. This gives us a picture of how a shepherd, a good shepherd, goes ahead of the flock to prepare. Alam niyo kung saan niya dadalhin yung flock. And he will not just go there, he will prepare the place for them. The word prepare there means to set in order or to arrange, to arrange for success or to make sure that there is proper placement that assures victory 
for things to be arranged in order to win. I have read that there are land formations even in Israel that are labeled as tables or mesa. More specifically, table land or table hills or table mountains or more commonly known siguro for us as a plateau, a mountain with a flat on top and they look like this. This could be what the psalmist, the shepherd is referring to in this verse. Shepherds know the terrain so well and they know where these places can be found. And itong mga places na to, though it is challenging to lead a flock there, these are great places to bring a sheep. Kasi nga, ito yung mga nakaka-receive ng dew from heaven and there's fresh water and clean water that, that abounds and, and it, at cold nights, it allows the, the grass to grow and produce green pasture. A good shepherd don't just know where these places are found, but they also take careful preparation where he leads the flock. So, bago mag-graze yung flock doon, mga green pastures, chinicheck ng good shepherd yung, yung, yung area if, if the grasses not just are green, but are there poisonous plants in the area. He also needs to check kung may mga water holes, may mga springs and drinking places for the flock. And uh, he wants to make sure that these are good, clean water instead of dirty and polluted water. Of course, uh, chinicheck din niya if the place is safe from predators. But what's even amazing about the sheep and the shepherd relationship is that even if there are other animals around, even if there are predators, if the shepherd is present, the sheep will feed because the shepherd's presence brings security and a sense of safety. God prepares a table before us even if the enemy is in front of us, we should not let the presence of an enemy obscure our view of God's presence or the table that he has prepared for us. Even if there is an enemy right in front of us or directly across us or opposite of us, never forget the Lord, our shepherd, who is for us and has gone ahead of us. The presence of our enemies does not negate the presence of God. Although at times, kaya mas ramdam natin yung presence of enemy cases of presence to God. But the presence of our enemies and their evil plans cannot hinder God's plan to provide for you and I, to protect us, and to lead us in His purposes. When the Lord is our shepherd, His personal abiding presence is all that we would ever need. Last year, 2019, none of us knew what 2020 would look like. But God already went ahead of us. And we can trust that He is leading us and will protect us and will provide for us and that He has already prepared the way for us and prepared a table before us in the presence of our enemies, whether it be a virus or a financial crisis or something else. And what's amazing is that God has gone ahead of us not only in 2020, but even in 2021. 2022, and every year that follows. While the future is a mystery from our perspective, I believe nothing is hidden from God. We may not know what the future holds for us, but if we know Him who holds the future, the Lord, our shepherd, we need not worry about tomorrow. We can trust that He has gone ahead of us and prepared a way for us. Just trust His wisdom and His heart and follow his leading. Things will be okay, and even better than you can imagine, because of our Lord, who is our shepherd. Secondly, God's presence is with us to guide us, comfort us, and fellowship with us. Last week, we looked at verse 4, which showed that God's presence is with us. This is what he says in verse 4. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God is with us in our valleys. In our darkest hour, God has always been and will always be there with us. He never abandons us, never leaves us, nor forsakes us. His presence may not be in a form of green pastures and still waters yet, but He is closer to us than we can ever think or imagine. 
during these troubling and difficult times, God is with us in the form of His rod. You look at that last week, His protection, His correction, His inspection. He is checking on us, the little details of our lives if we're doing okay. And His staff, He guides us, He directs us, He establishes boundaries for us, He rescues us, and even encourages us with His staff. His rod and staff, they comfort us. Not only that, but he also fellowships with us. Verse 5 says this, You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. In the first few verses, we are given a picture of a shepherd. In verse 5, we are given a picture of someone hosting a banquet. Anointing our head with oil, cups overflowing, table in the presence of my enemies. You know, I believe this complement the picture of green pastures, still waters, restoring our soul. And I think what this is saying is that even in the midst of our tough and difficult situations, even in the presence of our enemies, God is preparing seasons of festivities, celebration, and prosperity. Now, you may have noticed that there's a shift in perspective from a shepherd to a banquet host. The practice of heads being anointed with oil is actually an ancient culture. The young host will anoint the special guest with oil, and this brings fragrance and glow to the guest wherever he goes. Of course, this is also the practice of anointing someone to a calling, to a purpose, or an office, like a king or a priest. And uh, it's uh, it's such a very wonderful practice that David himself experienced when he was anointed king while he was still a boy. Yung cups overflowing naman is also a picture of abundant provision for celebration, bringing joy and satisfaction to the special guest. Hindi inaallow na yung, yung cup ng guest na babawasan or nauubusan ng, ng inumin. And, and they, want, uh, they usually want the, the cup to be filled. So itong cup overflowing speaks of the host's abundant, generous, and lavish provision and his desire to make sure that your cup is always full. This does not mean that the host is wasteful, but that the lavish the provision of the host is more than for you, but it is overflowing so that it can spill over to others. Of course, itong shepherding and hosting are not necessarily um, different and foreign to each other. Uh, remember the table is actually a shepherd's language also of a place, of a terrain where you could feed the flock. And also, sheep are also being anointed with oil. And uh, itong oil mixed with sulfur and spices are actually used to protect the sheep from flies, mga bangaw, and to heal the sheep from scabs or pag may mga wounds yung, yung sheep. So sheep are prone to insects such as flies and, and uh, they would usually get into their noses and their ears and they would lay eggs and eventually they would become uh, larva and it will really, it's so nasty that it will drive the sheep crazy. Same thing with scabs. Yung mga scabs are mga skin diseases that can easily pass on from one sheep to another. And especially itong mga sheep, may ibig sila mag-butt heads and when they rub against each other for relief, mas lalong kumakalat na just the, from one sheep but for the rest of the flock. Yeah, it is said that uh, when a sheep is being given the oil treatment, okay, hindi pa parang spa, okay, pero yung, uh, the shepherd will anoint the sheep with oil, especially yung head. Uh, it is said that there will be an immediate change of behavior. Nawawala yung aggravation, yung frenzy, yung irritability and restlessness. Instead, the sheep would start to feed quietly again and soon lie down in peaceful contentment. Even in the presence of our enemies, God wants to fellowship with us. He anoints our head with oil in His manifest presence. He protects us from the enemy, the Lord of the flies that tries to hurt us, that tries to drive us crazy, that tries to put nasty things in our heads and in our thinking and in our hearts. And He heals us when we are wounded. He fills our cups to overflow. I found out that shepherds also give their sheep cups to drink. 
And a book on shepherding mentioned this, how shepherds will bring bottles with them, usually a mixture of wine and water, to keep them warm during cold season. So can you imagine the table land, so a shepherd will lead the flock through the caves and the valleys and, and climb up to these table lands there. So in, during cold season, so sobrang walang protection, walang mountains, walang rocks, walang trees to cover them, and it will be very cold for the shepherd, meaning the shepherd is willing to go through the cold weather with the flock. And when it becomes very cold, the, the shepherd drinks from this cup. And the sheep, when they are having a hard time, even in the cold weather, the shepherd shares the cup with them to warm them up, to rejuvenate them. And I think this is also a picture of how God is with us, with you and I, more than you can ever dream or imagine. He's closer to you than you think. He is even with you in the cold seasons and the storms of our lives. He is with us. And he's fellowshipping with us and he warms us with his presence. And my question for us today is, are we even aware and conscious of his presence? May God open our eyes to see and recognize where he is at this time in our lives. And may he pour out his spirit in a fresh way to anoint us, his grace and favor to be made manifest in our lives. And that may the warmth of his presence bring the fire of God in our hearts, resulting in greater faith and passion for him. Thirdly, God's presence follows us, giving us assurance in this life and for eternity. The last verse of Psalm 23 says this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The psalmist is giving us a perspective why God's presence is indeed all that we ever need. Sabi pa nga niya, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Pag sinabing goodness, we understand that good things, benefits, welfare. But mercy is actually something that is even more than just awa or habag. Okay, yung, dahil naawa si Lord, hindi niya tayo pinanish. But actually, the word means loving kindness or covenant loyalty. God's perfect loyalty to his own covenant. So here, the psalmist is giving us the assurance of the character of God, his goodness and his loving kindness. He is good and kind then. He is good and loving and kind today. And he will continue to be good, and his loving kindness will continue on, even in the days to come. This gives us a security that we don't have to watch our backs. Na ano ba ano nangyari? Hindi natin alam. You know, somebody got our backs. It's like God is saying, "I got your back." The psalmist even gave us a picture of how God's goodness and mercy follows us, and the word "follow" there is actually more appropriate to chase after us or to overtake us. In other words, hahabulin ka ng goodness and mercy and loving kindness ni God. It will never give up. It will continue to pursue until it will reach us and find us. God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And this can also mean not just chasing after us, but it also gives us a picture of how it will be the trail that we will live it's not about how good we are, but how good God is. It's not about how merciful or how loving and kind and how faithful and loyal we are to Him, but it will always be about how He is faithful and loyal to His people in keeping His promises. Surely, goodness and mercy will follow us. But how long? The psalmist says, all the days of my life. And the verse did not even end there. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. When God is our Lord, our shepherd, we have an assurance not just in our lives here in a troubled and broken world, but we are assured of a dwelling place in the house of the Lord. God is present everywhere. He is before us. He is with us. He follows after us. But more than anything, He wants us to be where his personal manifest presence is found, not just temporarily, but for all eternity. This is even made clearer in the New Testament because Jesus, the Lord, the I am, the Good Shepherd, the one who is before Abraham and of God ahead of us, one who is also Emmanuel, God with us, 
He came demonstrating to us God's goodness and loving kindness. Yung covenant loyalty ni Lord, in spite of our sins, in spite of our unfaithfulness, in spite of our evil, sinful, wicked ways. He came here to save us and give us assurance of abundant life and life to the full to those who will trust and believe in Him. John chapter 10, verse 10 to 11 says this, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus is the good shepherd who laid down his life that we may have life to the full, abundantly. Life that is all around and a life that is forevermore. He is the invisible God made visible. A God who is everywhere made very personal a god who dwelt among us that we may dwell with him forever and he is right where we are leading us to where we need to be the question is do you truly know jesus is he your lord and your shepherd if not yet i want to encourage you to make him your lord and your shepherd that together with the psalmist we may declare, because the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not want. We lack nothing. And we have everything that we need. Because we have him. Or rather, because we let him have us. If that is your heart cry, and that is your desire, and you've never done this before, I want to encourage you to Make him your Lord and your shepherd today. Why don't you pray this prayer with me from your heart? Say these words. Lord Jesus, I acknowledge that you are the Lord, the good shepherd who came to lay down your life to save people like me. I acknowledge that I am a sinner in need of a savior. I turn away from all of my sins and I turn to your grace and mercy. I cannot be the Lord of my life anymore, so I surrender to you all of my life, the past, present, and the future. Give me a brand new heart, one that follows hard unto you. And fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may know you more and faithfully obey you for the rest of my life. Thank you, God, for accepting me for who I am and transforming me to be who I am today. In Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer, I just want to let you know many of us have prayed that prayer. That's one of the best decisions we've ever made in our entire life. And we would like to help you in this journey of knowing Jesus and becoming His disciple. We would like to get you started in this exciting journey called discipleship. So if you will leave us a message saying, I want to know more about Jesus, I want to be a disciple of Jesus, someone will get back to you and help you in this journey. So we're going to worship the Lord as we celebrate that decision. And of course, we want to celebrate Him being the Lord and Shepherd of our lives and His presence that is all around us. We want to remember who He is and what He has done by celebrating communion, the Lord's table that He has prepared for us in the midst of our enemies. And as the worship team leads us in the song, why don't you go ahead and prepare your communion elements and we will be partaking of it together. It's the same 
You lit for sap and free us from our burdens. Your love it bites up every broken heart. Now hope will rise in all that you created. Cause you are here, God of all. Oh, have your way. Come take your place. Let all the earth be saved. Your kingdom. I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, he prayed. 
when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's lift the bread. Lord, we thank you, God, for your body that was broken for us. So that we who are broken can be made whole. We thank you, God, that you took our sickness and diseases so that we can be healed. You took our death so that we could have life. You are the true bread from heaven, the bread of life that was given to us, Lord. That everyone who believes in you will not perish, but have eternal life. As we partake of this bread, which is a symbol of your body, Lord, let your healing come, let wholeness come. Let the joy of a full life and abundant life be upon us. And we know that all of this are made possible because of who you are and what you are. We thank you, God, for giving you thanks. Let's partake of the bread. In the same way, also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you, God, for your blood that was shed for us. Thank you, God, because of what you have done, Lord. There is forgiveness for our sins. And we ask God as you partake of this cup, which is a symbol of your blood shed for us. May you wash away every guilt and cover our shame with your mercy and grace. And we pray, God, that you would fill us with the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may live holy lives, life that would please you, life that honors you, life that glorifies you. We thank you, God, for this time. We give you praise, glory, and honor for who you are and for all that you've done. Is that great, Jesus? Let's partake of the cup. Why don't we close with a word of prayer? Lord, we praise and thank you for your presence that goes before us and is with us and follows us all of our days. Thank you for your presence that is in us through the person of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the assurance of a full and abundant life here on earth for all our days and that we are assured of dwelling in the house of the Lord forever. Not because of who we are, but because of who you are and what you have done for those who trust and believe in you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a grace filled week. See you next time for a brand new series. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor Richie, for that powerful message. And thank you, everyone, for joining us again during our online worship service. We do hope that you are encouraged by the message today. See you again next week and also see you during our morning worship and prayer every 7 a.m. from Monday to Friday. And also for our prayer meeting this coming Thursday at 6 p.m. See you again, everyone, and God bless. See you.